People love using Make.com as their automation platform because it has low operational costs and you can do some pretty advanced logic. But when it comes to Google Sheets, Zapier has Make beat in this regard and we're going to go over why exactly this is, why does it cost so much inside of Make and what's something you can do to fix this problem. Hi, I'm Dan Lehman from AutomationHelpers.com and we help businesses like yours build portals, apps and integrations. So I just have a simple table we're doing this with. We've got some account records that we want to back up into Google Sheets. Inside of Make, I've set up a pretty simple scenario here. We're triggering this with a webhook, so we'll be able to call a URL. Then we're going to search our records that we have from our accounts inside of Airtable. And finally, we're using the add row mechanism of Google Sheets to be able to take the data that we have in the previous step with Airtable and write the information into Google Sheets. So let's go ahead and run this automation and we'll see what this looks like. Here we can see that our automation's running and for each row that we have, we've got I think 17 different accounts, this runs 17 different times. So we have a total of 19 operations, one plus one plus 17, to be able to take the data that we need and then write that into Google Sheets. And here we can see the data that we moved over. Now let's clear this out for a second and we're gonna try the same exact thing with Zapier. Now I've built pretty much the same thing inside of Zapier. We're starting with a webhook. I'm using the API this time instead of a specific action, but we could do it either way here. And then you'll notice something a little bit different. We're able to create multiple spreadsheet rows inside of Google Sheets. So I ran the same exact automation with a webhook from Zapier and we're getting the same data coming across. But if I go back into Zapier and I go to my Zap history here, I can see the Zap that just ran and that consumes two tasks. So let's take a look at what this action means inside of Zapier, create multiple spreadsheet rows. Essentially what it allows us to do is to iterate on a bunch of records that we might have collected. In this case, it's from Airtable, but this could be from any data source that we have. And then we're mapping this across. We're saying the same thing that we did in Make. We're saying these are the fields that we have, but instead of treating it as individual actions for every single row, it's doing it all at once. Now in Google's own documentation, this is listed as a valid method. There's spreadsheets.batchUpdate you can send it some arrays or lists of information and it's going to iterate through that and write that in one single API call into Google Sheets. So this begs the question, are we missing something inside of Make? Well, if we take a look at the Google Sheets module here, we can see that they added tons of different things that we can do. In fact, more than Zapier allows. We can add and update rows, clear, delete, get specific cells, update specific cells. We can clear them. We can create new spreadsheets and add additional sheets. I mean, there's so much that we can do. And yet we have the ability to make an API call, but out of all these advanced things, we can't do a bulk update. So here's the conspiracy theorist side of me. I think because operations are so inexpensive in Make, Make is just kind of like, eh, we don't need to provide this functionality to you. We want you just to iterate this a bunch of times. So Zapier is typically more expensive than Make. We do a little bit of math here and we found out that the break-even point is you could have 87 rows of data and that's the break-even point at which it becomes more expensive to use Make over Zapier. Now you might be thinking, well, 87 rows, that's a lot. I don't even have to worry about that with how little this is costing me. But think of the number of people who are doing reporting in Google Sheets or big data backups. So instead of my 17 row example, let's say we were taking thousands of records of data and maybe we were doing this a couple of times a day this becomes significantly more expensive inside of Make. Never fear, my friends, if you are big fans of Make and you wanna stick with it, but you wanna get the cost savings that you'd experience on the Zapier side, you can use the Google Sheets API directly. So like we showed before, there is an option to make an API call from Google Sheets. This takes the connection we already have, so we don't have to make like a naked HTTP request to handle it. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this information and we'll plug this into our template section. So if you wanna head over to the website, we've got a link in the description below Below for the different templates we create and we'll copy and paste this information if you want to play around with it yourself. So I'm not showing you uh, some of the bigger automations that we've done because we've done this for a lot of clients, but if you're comfortable using a little JSON in your automations, this is going to save you a lot of cash in the long run. The last thing I'll say here is regardless of what platform, Make or Zapier or others, please use webhooks whenever you are able. You're gonna get a way better experience and you'll know exactly when this thing is triggering. I see way too many people who always start with an event and they say, oh, when there's a new record in Airtable, we're gonna kick this off and then we're gonna write that data over. But there are far better ways to get at more data so that you're saving the number of actions or the number of tasks that this is taking you. I hope this was helpful to see how each of these vendors are handling bulk updates with Google Sheets. If you have any questions about your own automations, don't hesitate to reach out to our website at automationhelpers.com where we're offering free 30-minute consultations.